Hello and welcome to the Outer Surgery Surgical Tips. Today we're going to be talking about hinges and how to make that perfect hinge. Now not all osteotomies uh, require hinges. For example, osteoclasis, shortening osteoclasis, the Mercado Smith shortening osteoclasis, uh, the Austin, they don't require any kind of hinges. Uh, but osteotomies like the Aiken, uh, like the Reverdin, like the dorsiflectory wedge and uh, and uh, any one of the closing wedges will require it. Hinges are an old thing that has been around carpentry for a long time and what they actually do is that they allow you to move bone in one plane or anything in one plane while creating a lot of stability because you will have a hinge. So in our surgeries that we do in podiatric surgery we're able to take that bone and realign it. And remember some of the very very basic things that you have to remember that any kind of bone loves compression. You need to have compression in order for the bone to heal. It has to heal side to side with as much contact as possible like the pages of a book. And there's little tricks to doing a proper hinge and that's what we're going to show you right now. When the blade oscillates it gets a little wider. Can you see that? And also it's important that when you're cutting bone that you start the blade going before you start cutting. Because if you put it on the bone and then you start it, there'll be a little jump and your cuts will not be as exacting. Remember what I said, you want to get those cuts as, as close as the pages of a book. So you notice that we have two cuts. And this is the trick. The first cut goes, uh, is the proximal cut, and it goes almost all the way to the end of the cortex. You want to leave a little bit of cortex here so that you create your hinge. The second cut, and this is the important thing, this is the money cut, this is what's going to make those osteotomies absolutely perfect. You stop short of the first cut. Notice that we have the first cut almost goes to the end of the cortex, and the second cut will stop just short of the end of the first cut. Now the reason for that, if you try to make a true V, what happens is that you wind up making a U. This way, by doing it perfectly like this, you'll get the most perfect hinge possible. Let me see if I can cut this without cutting my finger. We start by cutting side to side, almost all the way to the end. And notice how I'm moving my saw up and down, up and down, up and down, until I go all the way through. So the movement is up and down, up and down. Now the second cut, we have our first cut pretty well done. In order for us to get, and you could pull back in the camera a little bit. When you make your cuts, you want to make two cuts to be flat, so they meet like the pages of a book. So if you make one cut a little bit off and the other one flat, they're not going to fit. You're going to have a gap. So you want to make them perfectly horizontal to each other. And the way that we accomplish this is very, very simple. Can you see my cut again? When you, in order before you start making the second cut, you first of all get into the first cut and then simply move your wrist. You see that movement? Like this, and simply move your wrist ever so, ever so slightly. And once you move the wrist, you begin, you begin your other cut. Up and down, up and down. Don't get my finger out of the way. And there. So now we have our little wedge, and if you look at it closely, you will notice that the two sides are pretty, pretty parallel to each other. Now, this is the money shot. This is what's going to give you those beautiful osteotomies and hinges. I used to have a, a, a resident of mine uh, who was, it was really funny. And when I said that the osteotomy should meet as tight as the pages of a book, he says, I get it. He was from the South, by the way. He says, they have to meet as tight as a frog's ass. And I said, how is that? He said, well, that's waterproof. And really, when you get this cuts real tight and you take an x-ray, and I'll show you some x-rays before we get through today, you will not be able to see anything at all, which is beautiful. Now, to make the hinge, you put the blade flat against the proximal end. Can you see that pretty good? Flat against the proximal end, and then you're going to start up and down. And now you can see why it is important not to um, uh, not to make a V out of it. And then you start moving this around 
And the, the nice part of it, you just keep testing it a little bit until it goes. There you go, you almost have it, see that? Now, uh, this is a good example because I'm going to make it ever so thin, just a little thinner. Flat against the proximal end, and ever so thin. There we go. Now I should be just perfect. Look at that. Now if you notice, there's like a little gaping here, up in front. Well, what happens is that we have a little bit of extra bone here. Can you see that pretty good? So what we'll do is we'll address this by again, putting my blade flat against here, and getting that a little bit there. Now you see, can you see how beautiful it is? I think we can make it better than that. What the heck? Let's try it. I'm going to make sure that I don't have any. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You see it now? And this is how you get an absolutely beautiful bone. Now, obviously, we're doing a surgery on a plastic bone. Uh, the difference between a plastic bone and uh, actual bone is that actual bone is living. So the moment that you start cutting this, the bones start healing. In fact, we used to ask the question uh, always in our classes, when does wound healing begin? When does bone healing begin? It begins with the first incision. So there again, to reiterate, and this is so simple, this is baby stuff actually, you make two cuts to make the wedge. The first cut is the proximal cut and it will stop short of the cortex because you need bone here in order for you to create your hinge. The second cut is at the angle of the articular facet, so you get your correction and you stop that short of, of the end of the first cut. That allows you to be able to create your hinge. One more thing, when you're taking out bone, uh, remember be conservative. You could always go back and take out more bone. Uh, but if you take too much bone out, then it becomes a little bit more difficult. Well, anyhow, that's all there is to it, to making a perfect hinge. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation from the Art of Surgery. While you're here and visiting our website, make sure to look at our new program, Dupuy Trench Contraction for the Art of Surgery. It's a beautiful program and you're going to like it. For the Art of Surgery, I am Oi Mercado DPM. Thanks for watching.